I understand that all these years of discipline, all these years of being a student of the game has brought me to a point where I feel that happiness, that fulfillment, that excitement, that anxiety of what else do I have to overcome? Welcome, welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. You may notice a text coming your way right now. I really wanted you to be a part of this. And today's subject is break me, break me. And, you know, last week I was out of the office for a few days and um, I went on this unique experience, uh, something to, you know, that I invested in. And that's something that I've done over the years heavily. I've invested in my own personal growth and expansion right to become more aware to become wiser smarter uh to have like this certainty that what is what feels risky to most people will just become the next logical step that i need to take right and I st if i start thinking about all of that i've invested in all of that i've learned the wisdom that i gained over the years that i'm constantly working on my mindset on my skill set the very same things that i preach here on a consistent basis right that what seems risky to some will be just your next logical step. You know, I can't tell you how many times people have said, well, you're gonna waste that much money there. That doesn't make any sense. But what doesn't make sense is, is staying in one place, realizing that what you have right now is all that you're capable of creating. Having the same problems today that you had three years ago, having the same issues in the marriage, same issues in the business, that doesn't make sense. And understand that in order to get to that next level, you, you got to be in a place where you have to be a student of the game. And that's something that I, I really pride myself on, that I am a student to the game of life, that I am a student to those that are, are in places that I, I wish to be, whether it's through knowledge, whether it's through skill set, whether it's through ability. Like I put myself in that position on a consistent basis and it's paid large dividends for me in massive ways. And I went on this sabbatical or meditation retreat. And I got to tell you, like the first thing that one of the, one of the guys uh, said there, one of the trainers or facilitators was that he recently saw me at a conference that I spoke at. And he said, you were the only person out of all the speakers that they brought in. And mind you, this was a large group live. And there was probably about three to 4,000 people online. And he says, you were the only speaker that came in as a student. You were the only person that stayed through the entire process, writing on your notes, taking, uh, uh, writing on your computer, journaling, and going through the entire pro uh, progression of what they were trying to teach. And it got me thinking like, that's something that I think we all have to embrace. I think we all have to just understand that if we're stuck in a certain place, it's because we stop being students to the game. That there's always something that we can learn, something that we can always implement to become better. But to become better comes with this slew of problems as well. It comes with this fair share of obstacles and issues that you as a business person, you as a married person, you as an adult, you living in the game of life have to overcome. And sometimes wisdom, right, becomes the, 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 the biggest, like, nemesis. Awareness becomes the biggest nemesis because you no longer can avoid it. You no longer can be, you know, in a place where, where you feel like you're ignorant. Right? There's this old uh, saying, ignorance is bliss. Like, when, when you know... And then you don't do, it becomes this place where it, it almost works against you. It's almost like, I wish I didn't know because it's so hard to stay in that place. There was a long time where I would be like, man, why, why am I like so disciplined when it comes to these areas? Because I feel the stress. I feel the burdens. I feel like I'm missing out on life. And I would compare myself to friends and family that it seemed like they were having the time of their life every weekend, all the time, just laughing away. 
but I became more aware. So I can't be oblivious to the consequences. Because, you know, not being focused on certain things always comes with this fair share of consequences. And now I understand as I'm starting to progress and becoming wiser in, in, my, in my own regard, right? I'm not saying I, I've landed at a place where I can tell anyone what to do. But compared to the person I was and who I am today, it's, and, and it's absolutely amazing to feel what I'm feeling right now. Because I understand that all these years of discipline, all these years of being a student of the game has brought me to a point where I feel that happiness, that fulfillment, that excitement, that anxiety of what else do I have to overcome? And it's these feelings that we have to continue to dive into, but to become a student means you have to learn. And learning comes with this fair share of difficulties, right? Like, it does. There's a lot of things that will come up, that a lot of mistakes will, be, will need to be made, and these difficulties are sometimes are the very things that keeps us away from actually making the moves to begin with. And anytime there's a there's a opportunity to grow, it, it comes with that like automatic opposition. I mean, I came pretty close to canceling this trip, putting my money on the line because of all the different projects that I've embarked on. I don't have time. It's too much time away from my family. Then I start making up these stories, right? Well, you know, that time is reserved for my family. I can't do that. How selfish of me. But knowing deep down inside that that's the next logical step for me. To create a bigger awareness, greater wisdom. Because I'm not complacent where I am at today. And it's not financially. It's, it's not because I want more. It's just... When, when you dive into this game of wisdom and growing your capacities, is addicting because you can do so much more with it. You can serve so many more people with it. And that's what fuels ambition and it fuels drive. Because if it was up to me and me alone, if it was only for my family, I don't, I don't think I would, I would be moving with this type of intensity. And I know this is just the beginning of something much bigger. And, some of, and I would say the vast majority of you have that same feeling. And I'm inviting you to continue to become that student. The student that is curious to learn about all aspects of life, not just one. Understanding that if you do the right things, you will get the returns you want. And you know, coming back from this retreat, you know, well, first, let me, let me back up. Going there, um, I was overly anxious, right? Anytime I, I leave, I, I feel like, you know, things need to be in order. And, you know, I have a great team behind me. And, you know, I'm just so happy we were able to get so many things in order before I left. And the day that I got in, we had a few meetings that I needed to prepare for. And these guys, these guys put it all together. My team just made sure that they came through in a massive way. I left them a task list about this big. And they delivered. And I was just so happy to see that they, they understand what's at stake. They understand that just because I'm gone, the show doesn't stop that we have to deliver at that high caliber. So getting there in the wilderness, you know, I spent hours and hours, you know, on breath work and, and going deep into my own mind and soul. And there is this part of, of, the, of the exercise, right? Many hours of, of just meditation and, and, and just deep-seated searching. And I remember during that, there was a, a particular moment there where, where I said, and I demanded more. I didn't ask, I didn't pray for it. I demanded more. 
And in a way, I, I felt like I was just challenging, right? Uh, challenging God not to hold back on me, like to let loose on me. And I remember many, uh, a couple years ago, there was this book that I was reading. It was called Dangerous Prayers by Craig, uh, Craig Rocho. And as I was running these long miles, I, I remember listening to him. There was this one chapter that really just scared me. I, I was afraid to actually make that prayer because the prayer asked to be broken, to break me. And I started thinking about all those times in my life where I actually broke where I was broken and how challenging it was, how emotionally challenging it was, psychologically challenging it was for me, and how it affected my family, my, the, my financial situation, how uncertain and scared I was. I was fearful. I was riddled with anxiety. I couldn't sleep. I started growing bags under my eyes, right? Dark circles around my eyes. I was just so worried. So, to hear something like, hey, you got to ask to be broken. I was like, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> There's no way. I don't want to feel any wrath from anyone, whether it's the universe, God. I don't want to feel that wrath. I felt it. And I felt weakened at that time. But as I reflect many years later, I realized that all those things did. They did break me. But then I was molded. And then I was shaped to the person I am today. And it's always in that format. It's always in that way. Like you can't, you can't skip one of those three elements. In order to grow, you will be broken. You will be molded and you will be shaped to a different person. Depending on how you approach it. And so as I'm there, I, I, I was challenging. I was challenging God. I, I was challenging. And, you know, don't get fixated on any particular word here, guys. I, I was just in this place where I asked to be broken. Because in that same breath, I also asked for more. And I got to realize, and we all have to realize that if you want more, you will be broken. You will be challenged in ways that doesn't make sense. But the key to that is not to question it once the challenges present themselves before you. It's to understand that that's part of what you asked for. It's part of what you requested. It's part of the process, the growing pains of it all. Because I've been in a situation where I felt, and I, and I wrote a little something here on my journal this morning, and I'll read you just uh, some of that here in just a second. I'll get back to this. But it's, it's really analyzing my thoughts. Leaning, leaning into the chaos of growth is what will ultimately build my value. No one could build that for me. The capital I receive is in direct proportion to the value I am providing. I take risks, but it is the next logical step. It was a risk to me. It was a risk to make moves that I made. Owning a home free and clear and then moving to something bigger is a risk to most. But it's the next logical step for me. Signing on a massive building as the world is shutting down would be considered a risk to most but it was just the next logical step for me because I have been broken, because I have been molded and it shaped me to the person that I am today. What constitutes high risk for others is just the next logical step for me. But in order to get to that point, again, it's like there's going to be some things that, that will feel like they're breaking you, like you can't overcome it. And I got to tell you, like I was this, in this place, right, of, of just in a, in a bubble out there. And I'm demanding for more. And I'm request, requesting to be broken. And, and I'm seeing something bigger. And it seems so vivid and so clear. 
But then I hop on a plane and I, and I come to the reality of my life. And I got to tell you, like, I, I didn't transition the way I wanted. And some of you probably noticed that, right? Last week, I was, I was a little distant. Last week, I wasn't all available. Maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I started, started to feel myself again. But I was, I'll be honest, I was this emotional wreck. Going from this place where, where you see so, something much bigger, where you feel there's a deeper connection to source, right? Where you're demanding that you want more, and then you get thrown into the high pace of what it is to live in today's day and age. As a married man, a powerful woman, having kids, having a, multiple businesses, employees, having bills. It was very taxing on me. Like, it was just, I, I, I couldn't believe that this is what I embark on on a daily basis. <laughs> the amount of pressure and stress. And it's not until I'm plucked, the, until I got plucked out of my environment, brought back in, did I realize that the capacity that I run at, that most are unwilling to do what I'm doing. And I'm not going to have any shame for that. What you've built takes sacrifice. What you've done, most won't do. And I came into this and I, and I couldn't sleep. The first night I was up tossing and turning until 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And that hasn't happened to me in a long time. I sleep like a baby, right? I exhaust myself and I put myself in positions where I'm constantly just challenging my, my mind, my energy, my body, so that when time comes, I sleep, regardless of what problems I had. But I just couldn't. I felt like I needed to be in this place of just understanding that what I just asked for is going to require a much greater man. And I can't back up now. I can't back down now. I saw too much. It was exactly what I wanted, was the clarity of it all, of where I need to go. But yet when you get into the hustle and bustle of things, it's like we tend to forget. As soon as an issue arises, we forget that deep-seated purpose that we have. And that's where I was at. I, I was just, I could feel energy. I can feel everyone. I, I was irritable. I was, I was overwhelmed. I was anxious. I was, I was just like, I was just like on edge. And then I remembered. Then I remember what I asked for. I remembered what I demanded. And I also remember that I can't do this alone. And it is my job to continue to put myself in a position where I can learn, learn from others, and be intentional about my daily actions. And I wrote here, I am a student for life. I throw my hat in the game. I don't know it at all. I went on a sabbatical, a meditation retreat of sorts, hours of breath work and tranquility, hours in my own mind, asking myself to provide me more, demanding more, challenging God not to hold back and not to lose faith in me. I didn't come from a place where I prayed for it. I asked them to break me, to break my convictions, to break my resolve, to break my habits, to break the ceiling of what I think is possible. I asked them to give me all he's got. I know what comes with that. Overwhelming thoughts of fear, doubt, confusion, difficulty. But I can't lose faith. It is all meant to break and mold me and shape me to the person that can handle that. I am a student. I will always be one. So it's almost like immediately. Like all these thoughts of like, nah. Nah. Not right now. Maybe in the future, it'll happen for you. No, no, it's too much work. You already got so much on your plate. There's so, so much to do. There, there's no way. What's wrong with you? Well, that was exactly it, right? That's called being broken. Negativity is a way to break you. 
but it's staying in a place where you believe you, you stay there. That's the problem. Because after breaking is to mold you. If you take the right steps. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm not high risk. I, I invest in myself because I know what I'm made of. I have a conviction that burns deep within my soul. Because I understand living in a place of lack and misery. I reflect on that often because I never want to be in that place again. I'd rather be broken of frustrations of trying to learn and become more than broken because I don't have enough because of the lack, the lack of effort, the lack of vision. I've been in both places. And there's one I never want to return to. So I'm a student. And one of the things that I, that I realized and I learned is like, you can't control anything, everything. But if you have these big visions, you know, you got to surrender to the fact that you will not know everything. You got to surrender to the fact that you will be stressed. That things will become more difficult. It's not like you're asking to just be comfortable. When you're asking for more, it's not for comfort. It's because you will be challenged in ways that you never thought you can overcome. So surrendering to the fact that you can't control everything and you can't complain about what's coming your way. I asked to be overwhelmed. But with that, I'll build the systems around it just like I built it up to this point. I will hire the right personnel. I will increase my capacity, my skill sets, my mindset. I will also encourage those that support me to do the same. So I surrender to the fact that I can't do this alone. Second thing is being vulnerable, right? The humility of it all. I understand that. You know, the more raw and real I am about my inadequacies, about my shortcomings, about the things that I don't know, the better position I'll be to actually learn those things. So I'm a student. Carla's had her lectures. And I've seen the peace that has come within her with all the hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours of study. So I'm there like a student. I have humility in the fact that I don't know everything that I should know about my soul purpose. But I see someone that's doing it at a higher level than me, so I am a student. So I sit there like a student. I participate like a student. I'm not standing in the back with my arms crossed like I know it all. I don't actually assume that I know what she's going to talk about. I become a student and I'll sit there like I did at that convention. After I spoke, I became the student. And I'm noticing many of you that are doing the same. And I applaud you because I see your growth. And yet I see others that are keeping their distance even further away, having it in their own mind that that's just the way it is, or they already know this class. They already know what you're gonna, they're going to talk about. But yet, the growth hasn't come at the level that you wished it would. I want you to reconsider that. The growth and the intention of, of break me, right? Is to be thrown into a situation where you will have to learn, where you'll be forced to learn. Because what got you here won't get you there. Because the level of solutions you have right now are not good enough for you to increase your business by 50%, 100%. Which means you have to go through a transformation process. And this last portion of it is to trust, right? The trust that there is something greater out there for all of us, for you more than anything, right? And for me. Knowing that 
if you do the right things, you must have the faith that it'll work, work out. But complaining about the entire time that you're in it, shutting down, shutting away from your family, being in the dark, isolating yourself are not methods to get there. You got to trust and have the faith in yourself. Faith in something greater is looking out for you, right? But doing the complete opposite will get you the opposite results. And this is something that I'm going to continue to lean into. And I'm going to continue to share with you. I'm going to tell you where I'm going. I'm going to tell you of what steps I'm taking next. My hopes that it inspires you to do more as well. It's an unbelievable way to live the game of life. And it took me about 35 years to figure out that there's an alternative. That I don't have to succumb to the easy. That my initial perspective of what is fun, as I saw family and friends doing all their things, it's just short term. I feel more fulfilled and more alive today than I ever have. And there's a contrast to those that were doing those things back then. I'm seeing the consequences of it all, but it takes years. And at first it feels like there is no difference. They're having all the fun and you have all the worry. They have all the fun and you have all the, the work. But over time, it all gets exposed. And then you'll thank yourself for the moves you made. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back, guys. I'm happy to be in a place where I, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for knowledge. I'm hungry for wisdom. And I also would strongly encourage you to demand more. But knowing that it comes with this fair share of obstacles to overcome. So thank you again for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. I'll read a couple of comments. And again, you could be spending this time anywhere else. And I'm glad you're spending them here. I'm glad you're here with me. I'm glad that you're, you're taking 20 minutes or so to just get dialed in. And I hope that something out of this uh, small conversation will give you the value and, and the courage and, and maybe the wisdom to do the things that you've been holding back on. We're all students of the game, of life, of real estate, et cetera. Once we accept that we are all students then and only then will we begin to acquire and accept more knowledge leading to massive growth. And that's all it is, right? If somebody ever asks you, would you want, you know, a billion dollars or, or wisdom? It's like, huh, right? It's a no brainer. The wisdom that you gain ultimately gives you everything that you want. The wisdom makes life like... So like, uh, so it makes life so good, for lack of better words, right? It, it makes life just that, that, that thing that you want to do on a daily basis, where it's not a burden to wake up. It's not a burden to challenge yourself. And I absolutely love it. If you're not learning, you're, you're not earning. I love that, Brandon. Well, guys, I want to thank you again for joining me for this episode of Mindset Mastery. We have a lot of things that we have going on here at the office. Stay engaged, become students. And with that, I will talk to you soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Badass Agents Podcast, brought to you by AZ and Associates and Do The Work Coaching and Consulting. You can watch this and other episodes by subscribing to our channel on YouTube or by visiting us directly at badassagents.com. And of course, you can listen to this episode and many others on your preferred podcast provider.